Hi scrubs, I hope you're well. So I'm back with Flying for Home. I know it might look a little bit different right now. I found out that I could change how it looked. So if I went into Satins and I went down to Sight Skin, I changed it and I like the purple one so I've gone with it. Um, I'm going to update you guys on how my horses did after the tutorial um, and also we're going to start looking a little bit more in depth in different parts of this game so we're going to go into the handbook and have a look through there shortly. I just wanted to say before I start though, thank you to everybody that reached out to me on YouTube and in the game itself. Um, the community for this game is really really helpful and very welcoming and I just wanted to say thank you because um, I got stuck on a couple of things and you guys have been really really helpful um, giving me tips and things. So. Some of the things that I found quite interesting on this is like we had on horse where we had like um, we would level up and get different jobs. This has kind of got this thing called skills. You can see my level over here is level three. So whenever I got my first level, I was able to put a point into training. So for each star that I get, then I get kind of a perk for that. So the first one is view morale and consistency bars on your horse's pages. And it sort of follows on from there, um, all these other different parts, which I suppose we'll get further into as we sort of progress. But if you find, for example, you see something in the handbook and you're like, I can't see that on my page, you might want to go in here actually and see if it's a case that this is a thing you're going to have to unlock once you've got your level up on the game itself. So we're going to go and have a look at my horses here. So I went and got a bunch of new horses and I will show you guys. So as you can see, I have a lot more horses than I did when I finished the tutorial. So when I finished the tutorial, I had three, and then I went and decided to go back to the horse tutor and get a bunch more horses um, because I figured it would help me get a better understanding if I had more horses to work with and also possibly a better chance with races and so forth. Um, so at the minute here, you can see all the horses that I have. This horse is a horse that has done very well for me here. So I'm going to show you how my notes for basically the previous race me went. So I had a couple of placings in different ones. I had two that didn't finish, which I've found out more about, but I'm not going to focus on that right now. Um, but that was one of the horses that I actually managed to get a first place with, so I'm very pleased with that. Um, so at the moment, the only horse that I've worked for the next mate is this one. And his feeding is done and he's also got his training done. Um, I haven't entered him yet, but I'll probably do that. What I kind of like about this is the fact that because the meet ends Thursday and then the meet after that will end Sunday, you don't have to be on here constantly, which I think is nice. Obviously, it depends how many horses you have, um, but for the moment, I'm going to work with the amount that I have. Now, we're going to go into the handbook because I'm going to go through some of the frequently asked questions from the handbook, hopefully for anybody that wants to start this game, just to get a better overall look at it. So, um, the first one is, how much does it cost to play uh, Flying for Home? Flying for Home is completely free to play for as long as you would like it. However, there are some items and perks on Flying for Home that are only available for purchase with Pro Coins, a currency based with US dollars. Pro Coins and other paid perks are never necessary to play and uh, are only meant to enhance your gameplay not give unfair advantages. Pro coins are very easy to f uh, earn for free, so even if you cannot spend the real money, a little patience will eventually reward you with most of the perks anyway. Most special items can also be obtained for free if you actively partake or participate in events on the game. So how many accounts can you have? As outlined in the terms of service, each user is strictly limited to one account. So running multiple accounts is the number one reason people are banned, usually without warning from flying for home. So it is in your best interests to avoid having more than one account, obviously, to avoid being suspended. And if you're in the case where your spouse, sibling, or roommate, or anyone who might be on the same IP address would also like to play Flying for Home, you must obtain permission before, before or immediately after they register. If you plan to have two or more people playing from one IP, simply send a private message to Isa uh, with from one of the accounts. Be sure to include the ID for the other person's account, as well as a brief explanation of who you are. Okay. So, obtaining permission allows us to place special flags in your accounts to note that the, they may sometimes be playing from the same IP address. This will ensure that you are not automatically banned during periodic IP address checks. However, this does not give you an excuse to break the rules in terms of service if there is evidence that one person is using multiple accounts even with permission solely for the benefit of one primary account, all accounts involved will be banned. This means you should keep suspension transfers of money, items and horses to a minimum. So it's kind of similar in that way to horse that you multi-account it's going. So how does time work on Flying for Home? 
One year on Flying for Home is approximately 10 weeks in real life. The main racing season runs between March and October in game months and is two meets per month, meet A and meet B. During racing season, one month in game is equivalent to one week in real life. Off season runs between November and February in game months. During the off season, tracks uh, host less races than normal and do not uh, host any G1 races. Off season months only have one meet, giving you more time to focus on retirement, breeding, and getting two year olds started in training. So, when do races run? Races run twice uh, each in real life week, Thursdays and Sundays at 1 a.m., uh, flying for home time. If races will be running on alternate days, a warning will be posted in the news. Series races such as Trinity's, Gems, uh, Gold Cups, and World Championships often run early on the normal schedule since live broadcasts um, from them may span several days. Enter series races within 24 hours to ensure they don't fill before you can get in. So how do I get help for something I don't understand? Have you checked the rest of the wiki slash handbook? Help guides um, on any relevant pages and the terms of service. If you're exhausted all of these resources and still can't find a clear answer, your next best bet is to go look in the recent news. If that doesn't answer your question, you have a few options. First, you can post on the forum, most likely in the help section. You can also pay a member of staff directly with your question. However, Flying for Home uh, Discord server is usually the fastest way to get help. Staff and other experienced players are available virtually 24-7 and can provide as much help as you need. So how much time do you need to devote to Flying for Home? Um, the game can ultimately be adapted to your own preferences. You can manage a stable of 5 to 10 horses in as little as 10 to 20 minutes a week. If you want to become a mega stable with 500 plus horses, it's going to take quite a bit more time. You can be just as successful with a small barn as with a large one, though we find that a owning approximately 50 to 100 races is a sweet spot. So in terms of difficulty, you can opt to try to learn every detail of the game to develop the best strategies for winning races and breeding legends. Or you can play just for fun and not worry too much about the finer points of the game. In any case, there is a certain learning curve to the site, and people rarely join and instantly become successful. You need to take some time and acclim uh, acclimatize yourself with the game and learn at least the basic concepts of gameplay. So these are the most frequently asked horse care questions. So will I lose my horse if I take a break from the game? In short, no, you will never lose your horse no matter how long you step away from the game. The only exception to the rule are leased horses, which will be eligible for for their owner to reclaim once you've missed two months of feeding and training or three months of racing. Though you will not lose your horses, they will suffer from neglect, condition, morale, peak and prime will all decline while you're absent from your account. This can also lead to many of your mares becoming barren. The longer you're gone, the more difficult it will be to get your horses back into racing and breeding shape once you return. If you know in advance that you'll be gone, the best option is to freeze your accounts, which will put all the horses into a sort of stasis. More information on freezing can be found under account settings. I like that as a feature because I think there's sometimes games where like let's say somebody needs to go study for a couple of weeks or whatever, that is a really good thing. You can just go right freeze <laughs> so nothing changes. Okay, so why do my horses keep getting hurt? The injury section details everything that contributes towards injuries. In brief, there are two main reasons a horse may become injured frequently. One, you are racing the horse with notes, which usually means you're entering with a low energy, low condition, on untrained services, at untrained distances, etc. Two, the horse has high risk and is simply prone to injury. Random injuries can always happen, but if your horses are repeatedly facing injuries, one of the two reasons is one of these two reasons is the culprit. I actually did find that whenever I was entering horses, um, at the very very start when I wasn't really sure completely what I was doing, I was noticing that I was getting like a little red axe on the distance, and then I was like, why am I getting the little red axe in the distance? And then when I started reading about it, I was like. Oh, it's because my horse isn't actually trained to run that distance, so the horse is going to very likely end up injured. So I would scratch the horse from the race and then go look for the distance the horse had been trained in. And if a horse hadn't yet been trained in the distance, then I went and trained the horse in the distance instead. So that seemed to... So far, I haven't had any injuries that I've noticed. So how do I breed my horses? Horses can only be bred if they are retired from racing. Breeding on Flying for Home is complex and not something you want to rush into. Getting a firm grasp on racing will greatly improve your breeding experience. You may only breed if you've 1. Unlocked the breeding skill 1 and 2. Have breeding passes. If uh, you meet both of these requirements, you want to take some time to study up on the breeding and genetics section of the wiki to help match each mare to a suitable stallion. It is not in your best interest to simply breed whatever mare you have to a random style that you've acquired, as you most likely end up with a very disappointing foal. So do I really have to train all of my horses every month? Yes, horses benefit in many ways from training, including increased condition, chances to improve courage and consistency, increased morale, and increased experience from body workouts. 
If you skip training, even if your horse's base stats are maxed, your horse will not perform as well in races and can be more like more apt to get in hurt. Uh, mistraining on mares in full will also make them more likely to have high pregnancy risk and can contribute to becoming barren. So these are the most frequently asked racing questions. How many races can my horse enter? Technically, there is no limit to the number of races your horse can enter in a meet. On a practical level, however, horses should not race more than once per meet, unless you have to, you have been given sugar cubes. Most horses lose too much energy for a single race to be able to safely enter a second in a single meet. In fact, most horses perform at their best when only raced once per month, sometimes less. I have only entered mine once per race because I was like, the energy being too low, because there was a horse I had that wasn't really low in ener energy, but when I looked it was like, there was a chance of injury on it, and I was like, don't think we'll do that, so I've been trying to make sure that I enter horses with like no less than 90% energy. Ideally you want to be entering them when they have 100. So why is my horse unable to enter a race? Yearlings retired and pension horses cannot race. In addition, horses who are injured, whether on stall race or not, cannot race. If none of these are the case, your horse may not have a home track set and or may not be saddle broken yet. To move a horse to a track, visit their manage page, find the section on tracks and assign them a primary track. Uh, to tell if your horse is saddle broke or not, simply look at their image. If they're not wearing a saddle, they have not yet completed their basic training. Uh, can I just enter my horse in any available race? In short, no, there are many factors that determine what type of uh, race a horse can enter, which are explained in more detail in the racing section of this wiki. If a horse has never raced before, it has no restriction on what grade it can enter, but you're still better off figuring out what grade suits them. In addition, it is always in your best interest to actually find a race your horse will like, which you can determine by following the steps outlined in the tutorial and the wiki. This includes checking distance and surface most importantly, as well as track region and gender restrictions. So where can I find out if my horse has won their race? You can see how your horse performed their race from a few different places. First, navigate to your stable and view your stable results. This will show you a list of all your horses that race in the past meet, along with information about how they placed. This is a great place to check for race notes. You can also view a horse's results from the race history tab of their page. So grade 1 races are also highlighted in the events page, uh, which is the icon that looks like a calendar on your right sidebar. In addition, you can view results for an entire track by going to racing and then clicking on the results link. So why is my horse not winning or running poorly? There is not a simple answer for this. Every horse is different, though in many cases poor performance is due to a combination of race notes, low morale, or low peak. You should have carefully read the wiki, especially racing, to better understand the mechanics of the game and to help isolate your horse's problems. You can also join Discord, post in the forums, or contact a staff member privately to ask for advice about a particular horse. Okay, so those are the f most frequently asked questions, but obviously for each of these things, there's more detail than in the handbook. And the thing that I want to focus on next actually is the icon guide, because there's a lot of icons in the game. So we're going to have a look through these. So the first one is what level you are and how close you are to the next one. So that's this one over here for the current level. Then we've got what stasis you're currently on. So for me right now it's green because I'm online. Um, how many uh, flying from dollars you currently have in the bank. So that's this one here. And how many pro coins you currently have. So I don't have any right now. And you have how many trader tickets you have currently have. So those two trader tickets. Those are the tickets that we use to get some horses from the horse trader. Okay, so this one here, the gold blood. So this horse is a gold blood. So if I go back here to my horses really, really quickly. Okay, so training. So whenever I look at my horses, obviously, there's these like little teardrops beside their name in the training section. So right now we can see blue and pink ones. So in here we know that the blue means they are red and sort of the, well purplish I guess more than pink, is the quarter horse and the pant horse is the more pink, sort of rosy colour. So right now I don't have any pant horses but everything's a thoroughbred bar these quarter horses here. Now the gold blood, which I did see where did I see this? Um, enter the horses. That's it. Because I this is this is where I've seen something about a gold blood. Okay, so gold bloods are also known as custom horses. These are horses which you can purchase using special tokens available at the pro shop. You can choose unique colors and markings for these horses, and they come with some quality guarantees. These are a special breed, unique to flying for home, but they still share traits with real life thoroughbreds. 
Though gold bloods and thoroughbreds may run the same distances, sometimes the same races, they do not cross well within the game. Breeding gold bloods and thoroughbreds together is discouraged and will usually result in poor quality folds. Folds with mixed lineage are referred to as impure, though anything that is not pure thoroughbred would be considered a gold blood for racing purposes. So that's what a gold blood is in, in the game. So this one is Horses and Extreme Mare Makeover. Okay. I haven't come across that yet. And then select horse is a select seal horse. Okay. So then we've got stable and horse care. So a horse has not been fed, trained, body worked, or entered. So obviously we see that here for the horse that I have fed and I have um, trained. There's the little green icon. So horses that have been fed, trained, body worked, or entered. Also indicates when a horse is qualified. Okay. Uh, horses unable to perform a listed action due to injury or age. So right now, if I look at my horses, none of my horses are injured in that regard. Okay, so um, they, this bar indicates a horse is not qualified. So if we look at my horses, none of them are qualified for anything. So the next one is horses injured and has not met, seen the vet or is currently on stall rest. This one indicates a horse is injured and is currently on in rehabilitation. And this one is horse has broken equipment. So obviously we haven't any of those right now. Okay, so the next bit is MA slash SC eligibility. So from what I understand, that is referring to this bit here. So steeplechase or marathon. So this one indicates a horse is not eligible for either. Um, well, and or. This one, a uh, horse is eligible for MA and or steeplechase. So a horse has been transitioned to marathon and or steeplechase. Horse was eligible for MA before transitioning to steeplechase. So I think that's what that covers. Then we've got sales and auctions. So horses being offered for private sale. Um, then this one is horses being offered for public sale. This one is being offered for public lease. And then horse is currently consigned to an auction. And then horse has genetics purchased. And then for racing, we've got races and auto qualifier for gold cups and league of legends. Then we've got a uh, horse has race notes that need attention. Um, horse received a handly note due to being downgraded. Horse was injured during a race or this one denotes horses you own in the race, and this one denotes horses that benefited from the pl from the pace in the race. This one denotes horses enter is entered for a claim in the race. So then we've got the breeding icons. Now, obviously, we're not going to be jumping into the breeding part at this stage, um, but this one indicates mare is not in full. This one is to ship the mare to the stallion to be covered. Mare has been covered by stallion. Mare is ready for the vet checkup. Uh, mare has been confirmed in full. Mare has miscarried, mare has foaled, or mare is barren. Then mare of stallion is injured and can't be bred at this time, and mare of stallion has been reached their full limits. Then we have the stallion incentive program, so the stallions have different ratings, platinum plus, platinum, gold plus, gold, silver plus, silver, bronze plus, bronze. And then this one has stallion has at least five foals and has not been tested and or retested by the stallion incentive program after his most recent foal was born. And then the green one indicates the stallion is a freshman less than five foals. So then we've got awards and achievements. So horses earned a performance merit for 100 racing points. Horses earned performance distinction for 250 racing points. A horse has earned a court of stars for 500 racing points. A horse has won a horse of the year award. Horses earned a grand slam by winning a Trinity series and a world championship festival classic or drift dist distaff race. Uh, horses are into Rising Star by winning a World Championship Festival, Juvenile Race, and Trinity Series. So then we've got the racing trophies. Horses won a League of Legends race. Horses won a World Championship Festival race. Horses won a Crusaders Challenge Series. Horses won a Gold Cup race. Then we have Horses won a full Trinity Series, all three races. This is as Horses won a Trinity race, and this comes in three colours. And the Horses won a Gem race comes in a variety of colours. Then we have a breeding award, so horses earned a genetic distinction, horses earned a genetic merit, horses earned a peerless award for maxing at 60 potential, uh, horses earned a seal of pedigree, and horses earned a superior stallion mare award.
Then we've got the forum icons, so bug catchers, unclassified, probably not viewed by an admin yet. And then we've got low priority, moderate, high, completed, and then thread locked. And then ideas and suggestions, so unclassified, probably not viewed by an admin. And then the green indicates that the idea suggestion is likely to be implemented in the future. It does not guarantee implementation, nor does it set priority. Uh, yellow indicates that the idea suggestion is neutral or undecided, unlike uh, class unclassified ideas, they have been reviewed and are either not necessarily needed, but not necessarily bad. Um, the red indicates the idea suggestion is unlikely to be implemented in the game, and this may be because it is impossible or troublesome to code in the game, or simply is unnecessary for the gameplay, or contradicts the goals of the site. Uh, these may eventually be archived to prevent clutter. And then blue indicates ideas and suggestions that have been implemented. Most of these have been locked and will likely be archived in the future to alleviate clutter. And then finally is thread locked. So that is all of the icons on the game. So at any point you have a horse that's got an icon and you don't understand it, it's really good to go into the handbook, into the frequently asked, and just click the icon guide um, because that will help you definitely with that. Like obviously for the breeding ones, we're not going to worry about that right now. We're not this far in <laughs> in terms of achievements or anything like that, uh, but it's good to actually have a look through there. Now I want to enter this horse into your race now. They've been fed. They've been exercised, um, and I've been doing. I've been writing notes. So anytime I exercise one of my horses and it says that it can't improve anymore, I've been writing in here so I know. Um, so we're gonna enter this horse. So this horse has been trained um, at 12 and 11. So we're gonna go and enter this horse. This horse is, um, prefers the dirt tracks. So we're gonna go look for a race to enter this horse in. Now I think we're gonna go with this one here because. As far as I know, this is where we're located and we'll have possibly a bit of a better chance on our own home track where the horse is used to running, so we'll enter that horse into there. Now, this is what I've been doing, is every time that I enter a horse, even if I'm sure it's going to be okay, I just click check anyway. Um, now if we have a look here, okay, so energy, the energy is 100, so the green tick is ideal. Maturity, it's got a green tick. Now morale. Not ideal, it's 97, but hopefully it shouldn't be too bad, it's just caution with that distance. That's green, so we know that we've gone into the right distance. Condition isn't perfect either, um, it's just on caution. And we've got risk, soundness and surface are all ideal, so that makes me reasonably happy that I'm okay to run that horse in that race. So um, when I've been entering horses, if I did get an extreme caution, I've, as I said, I have um, discarded them out of the scratched them out of the race and then looked for something maybe more suitable and if nothing's more suitable then I've just full on just gone and focused on training them and forgot about entering them instead uh, because I think that's the best way forward for me right now. So obviously if you have any questions you can leave them down in the comments. Obviously I'm still new to the game but we're gonna figure this out as we go along with it. And anyways guys I'm gonna leave it there. I hope you said a little bit. Bye guys!